Is this snap, crackle, and pop it? That cord? Yeah, I know. It's probably the cable in my, uh, my microphone. What type of cord is it? Cheap one, the Lisp Pro. I mean, what type? It's got TRS? It's, oh, it's, it's a Sennheiser. Yeah. Okay. It's got the eighth inch plug. So it's, got the, it's got eight inch? It's got, yeah, it's, it's the little tiny plug with the screw on it. The three prongs and the... No. 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 So it's tip ring, Steve? Tip ring, right. Balanced. Yeah. Right. With the, with the screw on it that screws down. Right. Hi, Facebook guys. YouTube, everybody. Guys, welcome. Okay, we're in a Friend of Sinners Part 4, and I titled this one More Than Conquerors. Okay, so let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we just are going to look at the words of Jesus, and uh, we just pray, Lord, that today we can have an understanding more than we've ever had, that you would open the scriptures, that we can, that you would plant good seeds in good soil, that they would grow and produce uh, the maximum amount of fruit that they can produce for your glory, Lord. That we would not only have an understanding of what Jesus is trying to teach us, but we'll have an application that we can live out in our lives that will bring us not only a, a little closer to you, but a little, that we can be closer to each other. And that we can understand more why there's so many problems on this earth. And that we can deal with them the way you do. And that we can be more Christ-like in all of our ways. And we ask these things for your glory in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Yeah. You know, as I read the Bible and, and as I live my life, because I'm I'm getting older, you know, and I, and I have this wonderful wife who who suffers. She literally suffers all the time, and and sometimes I want I, I want to ask God why 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 would you do that, and you know so. If you study the Bible, you'll find out that suffering is a prominent subject in the Bible. Okay? It's an unavoidable topic. Okay? Not only for you and for me, but it was for Jesus also. Okay? Someone once told me, you preach on suffering and you'll never lack an audience. It's kind of true there. Okay? So we're going to look at, in John chapter 9, Jesus met a blind man who was never short of hearing theories about why he was blind. Okay? He, he never stopped hearing, you know, theories on suffering, and he never he always heard a lot of negativity from people because of his condition. Okay? And uh, on this occasion the disciples actually postured you know, an answer to, you know, asking Jesus why. You know, but they were not the only ones who believed that the blind man had some explanation to give or something to hide. Okay? Listen to the Pharisees and all the other people in, in his life, you know, they had something to say too. And, and in one episode, Jesus, he rejects the popular theology of suffering. And it, it, it's for us, we need to hear what Jesus is saying. Okay? He kind of overturned the, the suffocating view of the Sabbath and working on the Sabbath. Okay, and, and because, because the people, of the, the religious officials of that day alienated people because of their traditions. Okay, so having said that, well, what kind of attitude, behavior, and mission character, characterized Jesus when he was around people who suffered? Okay, Jesus saw them as vessel for God's glory. He saw them, he always saw them as a case for, listen, God wants to do something in your life. But how does God do that? How does God work in our lives through suffering? We believe, we have faith, we trust. He doesn't always alleviate the, he doesn't always alleviate the suffering right away. Sometimes he don't alleviate, alleviate the suffering at all. But he's always there with us. Okay? Listen, it's a, G, I believe that a lot of times in my own life, personally, you know, I've been at like this stupid tooth day. I had, I had two root canals on. I had a root canal, and then all of a sudden, years later, the tooth got sick again, and I had another root canal. But by the way, when you have a root canal on a root canal, it's kind of expensive. I mean, I have like over three grand invested in this one tooth, and I still had to have it pulled. That was an expensive tooth. 
I mean, it was two, two, two root canals and a crown. And it was a porcelain custom made crown it was, that was made to look like real teeth. I mean, I could have got a gold one and showed it. I got my gold teeth. You know what I mean? But, but I had it made so it looked like my other teeth. You know, and they took the time to actually make it. You know, my teeth aren't really that brilliant white. You know what I mean? I, you know, I smile. It's like, I mean, I got normal teeth, you know, because I drink coffee and all the other stuff I do. So he took the time to mix that porcelain so it looked like my other teeth. You know what I'm saying? So that, that tooth, boy, that, por that crown, that crown, you know, even with my dental insurance, and I have pretty good dental insurance, that crown was still like 800 bucks. You know what I mean? So I spent like two grand, I mean, uh, twice, I spent a thousand dollars twice for root canals and then another 800 bucks, you do the math. And ultimately, it had to be pulled. But now it feels better. Somebody told me it would feel better. But I wish it didn't cost so darn. I wish I would have pulled it out the first time. It would have saved me like three grand. Okay. But wait a minute. What is Jesus trying to teach me through all this? Wait a minute. Okay. How did Jesus be suffering? Did, 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 listen, does, does, does God cause us to suffer on purpose? No. So what, what is the way out for one who suffers? Uh, listen, listen, God, God doesn't. Suffering, suffering came into the world because of sin. Because of sin. God loves us. He doesn't want us to suffer. But he allows suffering in our life. Listen, it's not the easy. It's not the wonderful stuff in life that drives us to Jesus. It's the hurtful. It's the stuff that really hurts. The stuff that, oh. The stuff that cuts you deep. The stuff that makes you feel. You know, not. Oh, the joy, happy, happy joy, joy. You know, if we were happy, happy joy, joy all the time, we'd be so far from Jesus. But it's that hard stuff, you know, people dying around us, you know, stuff, the, our own personal suffering that drives us to Christ. Because there's nowhere else to go. Pills don't, pills don't work. Alcohol doesn't work. Drugs don't work. You know, if you're smoking a big fatty, it just makes you stupid. You know what I mean? It doesn't, I mean, it's only Jesus helps so we're gonna we're gonna examine Jesus was it, what he replied to the disciples. See, we gotta listen to his words. We gotta actually understand what he's trying to say. Then, 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 you know, with his contact with the blind man, you know, and, and his conversation with the blind man. If we'll just listen and hear what the Spirit is trying to say to the church, it will really help us. Okay. Amen. So we're gonna be in John chapter nine in your Bible. Okay. And this is a guy that was blind from birth. Okay. Listen, I want you to know that Jesus cares for the sufferer. And Jesus cares. He loves us. But he not only cares about you, he cares about your dignity. Okay. You know, he, he cares that, you know, don't, don't let people say, you know, let's look at the story. He said, as Jesus went along, as he went along, he saw a blind a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, we always want to blame something. The old blame game. Remember that? Where, where did the blame game start? The Garden of Eden. <laughs> Started when, when sin happened. See, remember that. The, the first thing, Adam, what did you do? Oh, it was the woman you gave me. He blamed God. But then the woman blamed, blamed the serpent. Oh, it's his, it, it was the devil's fault. The devil made me do it. No, he didn't. You know, the blame game started, but right when sin entered the world, the blame game started. So, so they're, they're thinking this guy that oh, this guy's blind because of sin. Okay, but but verse three, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. Huh? Neither this man sinned nor his parents. Verse 4, and as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming and no one can work. Verse 5, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Huh? What are you talking about, Jesus? What do you mean? Okay, first in his reply to the, to, to the disciples' questions, he, he gave dignity not only to the blind man who suffered, you know, but he gave dignity to his parents too, because everybody wants to. They want to blame something. Oh, you know, it's a, stop blaming people. Stop pissing. 
Sin is sin is sin is sin. Do you want to blame something? Blame sin. Okay? What's why? For, and by for all of sin. Amen? Listen, he gave dignity to the blind man. And, 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 and. Listen, I, I, how, how do you think this blind guy felt about this all life? I bet he heard that. You know, because blind people, they hear very, you know, when, when, you're, when you don't have one sense, your other senses are very acute. They're, they're very heightened. You know, so you can hear people talking, oh, this guy, you know, it must have been his parents, in, or he's saying, God, I don't know what So he probably heard that his whole life. Well, he was a man who was born blind. So he heard it for many, many, many years. Okay? Listen. For the disciples, the blind man on the road was a foregone theological, moral, and f philosophical conclusion. Okay? The blind man was a freak of nature. His existence was sword of the eye, and his condition was a judgment from God. Why come we're like that? How come we're like that? Come on. And, and I'm going to include myself. How come we're like that? Old plank eye syndrome. You know what I mean? Listen, from the way the disciples posed the question, they seemed to have no conceivable answer except the culpability of the victim and his parents. Okay? Listen, they, they, they could not have picked a better target or worse man or an easier prey. This guy was born blind. Okay? The, the, he wasn't made blind. He wasn't half blind. He wasn't almost blind. It, it must have been a proof of guilt, right? Wrong. Okay? But who was the black sheep, the parent of the child? Who in the family did it? Was it nature or nurture? See, see you hear this a lot today, don't you? It's just saying, oh, were they like that or was it a product of the environment? Shut up. Quit doing that. Listen, Jesus replied, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. I love that. Jesus, thank you. Listen, no, no, not, it ain't no... No, 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 but nobody's fault. Nobody's fault. But this happens so God's glory can be displayed in a life. That, well, that's what he wants to do in you. God wants to display his glory in you and me. Okay, listen. He emphatically, dogmatically, and categorically rejected the judgment and resolved him and his parents from guilt. Okay, the, the first Greek, the, listen, the, the Greek word, that Jesus uttered meant neither, none of the above, or even. Not. Not even. Not, 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 none of it. Ne okay? This is the only instance that Jesus ever answered a question, began a sermon, or initiated a conversation with an exclusive no. No, not. No, uh, uh, uh. Not. Okay? He, he repeated and negated the, the negation in the Greek to make sure his disciples get the point. He said, not this man sin nor his parents. Not, his, not this man and not his parents either. Okay, if you read or study it in the Greek, it's no. It's an emphatic. Not, not him and not his parents. Okay? It's not individual sin. It's not collective sin. It's not outstanding sin. It's not living or unknown sin. It's not what the parents did to others. It's not what the blind man brought upon himself. And, and, and it was not merited from God. Okay? What a, wonderful, what a wonderful declaration of hope for you and me. You know what I'm saying? What a glorious word of comfort. What a thrilling defense that Jesus offers to people who suffer and that are afflicted and those who are in pain. Oh, what is going on? What is happening to me? Unless the guy wants to... God loves you. And he didn't, he didn't cause it to happen to you. But sometimes it happens because there's sin in the world. The world's corrupt. It's not nobody's fault. We've got to quit blaming things. You know what I'm saying? Okay, once and for all, Jesus lifted the unnecessary burden, the curse, and the mental torture from the disabled. Listen, Down syndrome kids are very special children. Children with special needs kids are very special. So they, and we need to view them that way. And we need to love them that way. They have, it's weird how much they teach us. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, anybody listening to me? The suffering is like that too. Why? You know, I've learned a lot from my wife's suffering. You know, she stepped on my she stepped on my sneaker, dislocated her ankle, and broke both bones. Whose fault is it? Mine, because I left my shoe in the mud. <laughs> so I feel like that. That's how I feel. But I look how close my wife is to God. Did, did, did God do that on purpose? No. We, we got to quit blaming people, quit blaming things, blaming situations. It is what it is. What we do with the situation matters more than why it happened. Amen. Anybody listening today? Listen, the blind man had no burden of proof to, to prove his innocence. Okay, he, did, he didn't need to apologize for a condition. He didn't need to feel guilty about himself or feel ashamed before God and others. He didn't have to be ashamed of his parents. He didn't have to blame his parents. He, he was born blind. Listen. The passive verb to be displayed meant that the man could be on the receiving end of God's work because of a relationship. Okay, Jesus didn't talk about finding the cause of suffering, but choosing the cure. And who is the cure? The cure is a person. His name is Jesus. This blind man, this, this blind man didn't know who Jesus was. He couldn't see Jesus, but he heard him. And all of a sudden, he healed him. See, our mind cannot explain the reason for suffering, and our attitude, but our attitude can determine the outcome. What kind of attitude do you have? Most of it, most people, most people that get hurt, why did it happen to me? No. Maybe it happens so that God's glory can be displayed in your life. Okay? Listen, there's a story of a, a guy, he was a water bearer. He carried two large pots on each end of a pole to his master's house every day. However, one of the pots had a big crack in it. He, he, he could only deliver about, after he filled them with water, he would only deliver about half a pot when he got home. In contrast to the perfect pot, the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was only able to accomplish half of what it had been made to do. Well, the water pot said to the water bearer one day, by the stream he goes, I'm ashamed of myself, I want to apologize to you. Why? Why, asked the bear. He goes, what are you ashamed of? For the past two years, I've been able to deliver only half my, my load because of the crack in my pot. He goes, it causes the, the water to leak out by the wayside of my master's house. And because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you don't get full value from your efforts. The, the bear said to the pot, did you notice that there were flowers only on your side of the pot or the path? Not on, the, not on the other pot side. He goes, that's because I've always known about your flaws, so I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path, and every day that we walk back from the stream, you water the, you water the plants. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers and decorate my master's house with them. Without you being the way you are, my master would not have flowers to grace his house. Are you a crack pot? Amen. <laughs> they don't. They get filled with God's spirit and let God, and then you let God spill them. We hold this treasure in earthen vessels, Paul said. And we're all a bunch of crack pots. I can get filled up with God's spirit and be empty ten minutes later, five minutes later, because I'm a crack pot. That means i got to be constantly filled with God's spirit. And so do you. Okay? Listen, that brings me to my second point. God cares about the sufferer's personal word, but God cares about people. Why? God loves us. He loves us. Let's look at John chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. After having said thus, Jesus spit on the ground, he made some mud with the saliva, and he put it on the man's eyes. Ooh, he made mud pies with spit. And then he, then he put it on the man's eyes, and he said, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. That means the pool of sin. Okay, Siloam means sin. So the man went and washed, and he came home seen. Huh? This guy was born blind. He'd been blind from birth. And Jesus made mud pies. He made mud pies with spit. And he wiped it on the guy's eyes. And he said, go, go do what I tell you to do. And the guy, he did exactly what Jesus told him to do. How many of us do what Jesus tells us to do in the Word? 
Oh, come on. Some of us, uh, we got to do it every time. We need to learn to do it every time. They, Jesus didn't come just to care for the mental health of the blind man. He, cared, he cares for the whole person. He cares about all of us. He, you know, he cares about our mental state. He cares about our physical state. He cares about our emotional state. He cares about our psychological. I mean, come on. If you need to go to a psychiatrist, I got, I'm going to go to my psychiatrist. He's free. Don't cost nothing. His name's Jesus. And he won't give you Prozac. <laughs> Hello? Anybody that or Xanax? Amen? My doctor, Jesus. He don't cost a thing. Okay? Listen. The word saw in the verse 1. You know, the, the word saw in verse 1 implied that Jesus had already known the man's presence. When Jesus looked at the guy, he already knew. Oh, see, we've got to remember Jesus is God. We forget that. Even though he denied being God, he, he, he lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, he, he, he was God. He knew what men, he knew what people are thinking. If you read the Gospel of John, he, he knows what you're thinking. He knew what people were thinking. Okay? So he already knew. He already, he knew, he already knew about the guy before he even... Listen, he knew the man's presence, his condition, and his need before the disciples posed the question. Okay? After answering their questions, Jesus demonstrated that the blind man was a person to love, not a topic to discuss. Remember that when you start talking about somebody. They need, they need love. They don't, they don't need you to talk about them. They need you to love them. I need you to love me. Amen? And I can admit that. Okay, although Jesus used saliva to heal the deaf man, he, he, he used saliva to heal a deaf man in Mark chapter 7, verse 33. He, another blind man in, in Mark chapter 8, verse 23. Before touching their eyes or ears, he did the unthinkable. He healed on the Sabbath. <laughs> Just like he did here. In John 9, 14. Listen, that, that, listen, you got to remember that Jesus was God. God made Sabbath for the men, not man for the Sabbath. And these guys, they had done, they, they had been so long separated from God by their own thinking that they made up all these rules. Well, you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, if Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath. He goes, what if you guys, if a donkey or one of your calves or lambs fall into a hole, don't you go pick it up on the Sabbath? Why can't I heal? Listen. Jesus not only broke the Sabbath, he took his time. <laughs> and he repeated his motions and touched, tended to the patient. The word anointed or put on, or, or meaning smear or to make contact, occurs nowhere else in the Bible. When Jesus, in other words, he anointed the man with mud pies. <laughs> Listen, Jesus rubbed and massaged and touched the blind man's eyes lightly, patiently, and compassionately. He was in no hurry to heal, and the blind man was the person that most people wanted to avoid. But he had a lesson to teach us. He not only had a lesson to teach his disciples, he had a lesson to teach the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, the, the risk of meeting, offending, and angering the religious leaders of the day didn't stop him from healing. Okay. Previously in John's Gospel, the Jews were already seeking to find Jesus to kill him for healing a paralyzed man on the Sabbath in John chapter 5, verse 14. Pick up your bed and walk. <laughs> I mean, listen, in the final Sabbath day account in John's Gospel, you know, Jesus risked antagonizing the Pharisees to heal another suffering soul on the Sabbath. Why? Listen, couldn't Jesus heal from a distance? Sure he could have. But he did it with you know, Jairus' daughter. Go away, your daughter's okay now. You know what I mean? And she was okay. And he asked, when did that happen? The very hour Jesus said it, you know. But he, you know, listen, couldn't he wait till the day till the day was over? Well, couldn't he wait till the time was right or, and the coast was clear? Sure he could have. But he chose not to. Why? Because he's, his answer was obvious. As long as his day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming and no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. <clears throat> he didn't. You do things in the dark to hide. You do things in the light. 
You want everybody to see. That's John 9, 14. Now, listen, what, what does that mean? That, I just told you what it means. Listen, listen to what he says. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. What was he? Healing was what God sent him to do. What the Father sent him to do. Okay? He was not going to hide from it. Let's do it. Bring it out in the open. Listen. Listen, a short while later, Jesus was accused of not keeping the Sabbath in John 9, 16. The blind man was banned from the synagogue for acquiescing to the healing. John chapter 9, verse 22 and 34. For the Pharisees, the Sabbath day meant act inactivity. Doing nothing. You can't do nothing on the Sabbath. Listen, it, it even included hunger. You know, it, it, it meant... Matthew 12, 1 and 2, danger. Matthew 12, 11. You could have sickness, John 5, 10. So anything physical, including physically physical healing, was out of the question for the Pharisees. Okay? But God made the Sabbath. God made the Sabbath. Jesus is God. Amen. Me. Listen. A Jew was on his way home one Friday night. It was past midnight when he passed his house of his pious grandparents. To his surprise, they were still up. The Sabbath candles were burning brightly. So he went in. He goes, why are you guys asleep? He asked, it's past midnight. His grandparents looked sad and replied, well, we can't go to sleep because of the candles. If we let them burn out, the house may catch fire. And, and we can't snuff them out because it's the Sabbath day. Listen, a few years ago, this... An Israeli institute specialized in inventing devices for religious use on the Sabbath. They, they, without violating biblical command, they forbade the work. And they came up with a $10 Sabbath day pen that was a claim to fit the bill. The institute's director said that the pen was invented for doctors and patients and was kosher because the ink, uses, the ink it uses disappears after a few days. So you can write whatever you want, but it, after it disappears, you can't prove that I violated the Sabbath. Come on, this is foolishness. Come on. Listen, among the other institutes, popular invention was an electric timer or a Sabbath clock. It turns the lights off and on since that action was considered work by the religious. Well, I think people, they developed, they developed timers years ago. It's called a smart home. Now, now, now you can say, now, now, what, do you, what, you, what is it? That thing from Amazon, you, you tell her to turn out the lights and it turns out the lights. Alexa. And, and uh, Apple has the other one. You know, I mean, Siri. You know, this is G Jesus cared too much for the blind man to care what others thought about him. But about Jesus himself. Look, listen, he did what he, he came to alleviate suffering, not debate suffering. Okay? He would rather put himself in danger than leave others without hope. He was a physician, not a politician or a philosopher. Okay? Which brings me to my third and final point. Are you suffering? God cares about, listen, this blind man was suffering, but Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So the, what's the whole point of all this? Salvation. Okay? John chapter 9, verses 34 through 39. To this replied, you are steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? They're talking to the blind man. So they threw him out. And Jesus heard that, heard that they had thrown him out. And he went and found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asks. Tell me so that I may believe in him. <coughs> Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And the man said, Lord, I believe. <laughs> and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Amen. If you keep going, it says, well, the Pharisees are there. Whoa, because we see we're blind. He goes, yeah, dude. You know? But Jesus has come not only to give dignity to the sufferer, but to care for, and to care for people in affliction. But he's also came to seek and save those that were, that were lost. If he didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. Amen. Listen, he is the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sin of the world. There's a, you know that the, song, the line from the song Amazing Grace, I once was blind but now I see, was taken from the, the, the scriptures we've been studying. 
from the blind man. Okay, I used to think it came from the prodigal son, but you know, it, I found out later that it wasn't. Okay, if you look at what the blind man's words in verse twenty-five. Okay, you know, it, it, I was blind, but now I see. You know, that later the Jews literally threw him out of the synagogue because he said those words. Okay. And later Jesus returned to find the blind man when he heard about it, his injustice, mistreatment, and plight. And more importantly, Jesus, he returned to let him know that he could be saved. Okay. The, the, I, I don't know about you, but the, I, there's three simple words that I love to hear when people say it's the beginning of your faith. It's the beginning of your salvation. What is it? Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And I love it when you guys come here and you hang around long enough where you, 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 you believe long enough to where you know. You know. Because there's a prayer. See, it, 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 in the Gospel of John chapter 20, it said these things are written that you may know. That you have eternal life. Some of you, you've been hanging around. Uh, at first, we believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Well, when are you going to know? Today, I know. I, I know that I know. Poncho used to say, "I know that you, you know when you're knower." Amen. Amen. You know when you're knower. There's two different words for know in, in the Greek. One, one is gnosko. It means to know by experience. But then, and there's gnosis, which is knowledge of the mind. But there's a word that what talks about the true knowledge of God. It's epinosis. It's knowledge. Epi, it come down. It comes upon you, like when the Holy Spirit. Like you get, what you you're filled with the Spirit. But then when the Spirit comes down on you with power, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. It's when th when things really change. When you never go back. Amen. Listen, there's no stronger, firmer, or clearer way to express one's belief in Jesus through the gospel than these two similar words, I believe. It's the utterance of faith. It's the utterance of trust. It's the utterance of hope. Okay? It's also, the, 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 listen, James said the, demon, the demons believe and tremble. Amen? <laughs> listen, there, there was a, a guy who, with, a, with a demon-possessed son who when Jesus came down from the mountain, they were trying to cast out the demon. And he said, and Jesus said, hey, do you believe? And he said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Maybe some of you need to say that. Sometimes I say that. Because, you know, it's a, listen. What about Mary and Martha when Lazarus died? You know, Jesus straight told him, I am the resurrection and the life. She goes, oh, I know that he'll be raised in the last day. No, he goes, no, they missed the whole thing. I am right now and I have always been the resurrection and the life. Amen. Listen. Jesus, however, he, listen. He said, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world, John eleven twenty seven. 27. Note that the demon-possessed man's father didn't call Jesus Lord. But he needed help to overcome unbelief. Okay, Jesus, however, was not surprised by the blind man's confession of faith and the Pharisees' persistence in blindness. Okay, spiritual blindness and separation from God, stubbornness of heart, is worse than social rejection. Okay, being dead in sin is worse than being marked a pariah. <laughs> Listen, being Jesus' captive was compensation enough for being a society's outcast. The blind man, to his surprise, discovered that these mean streets were not over. Okay, The unkind labels would not go away. The cold reception was not a thing of the past. You know, he thought, oh, I'm going to be treated better, nicer, and kinder now, but no, don't believe that. Don't believe that. The, the, the religious people of the day treated him worse. Okay? But there's, but no matter what happened, listen, when you get saved, there's a difference in you. There was a difference in this blind man. He confessed Jesus in the face of religious persecution, repression, and discrimination. He couldn't remain quiet. He couldn't be a yes man or play the role of a victim anymore. Listen, I used to be blind, but now I see. How about you? 
Listen, he used to sit alone begging others. Now he was now now it was replaced by believing in Jesus and worshiping Jesus. Okay, beneath all the the, the defective eyes of this man was a seeing soul. Okay, this is what Jesus meant in John chapter twenty nine. The, the people came to him and said, "We want to work the works of God." And what did they say? The, the work of God is to believe in the one whom He sent. Okay, you guys, I'm still here, right here. Let let Alan handle that. So, in conclusion, you can lose your health, you can lose your job, you can lose your money, you can even lose your dignity. But the blindness of your heart and the loss of your soul is more scary than any uh, than any blindness of your eyes or the loss of your sight. Listen, how's your soul? How's your soul today? Are you okay? Amen? Listen, Jesus Christ has come to judge the world so that the blind will see... And that those who see will become blind. So let, let, let me rephrase that for you. If you think you know, you probably don't. If you, if you think you don't know, you probably know. <laughs> Sounds like oxymoronical, huh? But that's us. Listen, are you willing to give and trust your life with the one who cared for cares for you? Listen, he cares about the whole you. He cares about your physical. He cares about your emotional. He cares about your mental, but mostly he cares about your spiritual. Where are you spiritually with Jesus? Okay. Are you surrendered? You still got stuff in your life that makes you feel guilty? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. It ain't worth it. You got a buzzing in your speakers? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Listen, Helen Keller said there's none so blind as those who refuse to see. That's where the, a blind person is the one who said that. There's none so blind as those who will not see. Imagine that. Helen Keller said that. Amen? So today, where are you? Where are you? You got some afflictions going on in your life? Remember we said, here, he is jealous for me. Remember that song? Those afflictions eclipse my glory. Paul said this, the sufferings of this life cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. So sometimes we got to go through it in this life. No, we're not promised to know that bad things won't happen. In fact, Jesus said in the world you'll have tribulation. <laughs> What's tribulation? <laughs> problems. Uh, uh, let's, call them ma let's call them major problems. In, in this world you'll have major problems. But be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. Amen? Listen, he, Jesus cared about this blind man. But he wouldn't let people blame. It wasn't his parents who sinned. It wasn't he who sinned. It was just a situation that God had brought in so he could reveal his power and his glory. So what situation in your life does God want to reveal his power and glory? Maybe he wants to heal your family. Maybe you've got a physical condition he wants to touch. Maybe you've got something going on in your family. Maybe you haven't seen your wife in a long time. Maybe you need to call her. Good. Uh, my, my wife reminds me all the time God's a, God's a family man and he had a son <laughs> family was always God's idea I mean the first institution he made was marriage he made man and woman and said for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother the two shall be joined and, you know, the man shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become well when was the last time you talked to your other half I talk to mine every day Amen. Good. And, and, if, and if you're looking for us, if you're looking for a spouse, quit looking. Let God bring her. <laughs> Amen. So what is it in your life? Let's bow our hearts before the Lord. Where are you in your walk with Jesus today? What's going on? Okay. You got some hurts in your life. You got some pains. Okay. Maybe maybe you just need to give those pains to God and let God heal them. See, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you, well, I don't know what's going on. You do. Okay, what, what, what is it that makes you suffer? Most, most of us think too much about stupid stuff. Okay. But we got to you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let me, let me rephrase that in modern language. Quit thinking so much. Quit thinking so much. You're thinking so much, I'll drive you to do stupid stuff, you know, or, you know, 
You drive yourself crazy. It's like having a ping pong game going on in your head. So stop it. Put the paddles down. Put the ping pong ball down. Quit, bouncing, quit letting it bounce around in your head, man. Get, get focused on the one who loves you. Get focused on Jesus. Amen? Listen, Jesus loves you. So, today, I don't know what's going on in your life, but the Lord does. So, He wants you to, he wants you to trust Him. He wants you to, to say, I believe. He wants, you, he wants to bring you to a place where you know. How do you do that? By being obedient to the scriptures. But Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. In other words, if you love me, do what I say. It, it, it should be, it should be, be with, it, with your new nature, with the Holy Spirit living in you, it shouldn't be something that's hard to do. It should be something that happens supernaturally. It should just flow. Amen? So today, if, if, if you're struggling, if you're still not sure, you let me ask you a question. I don't want to be looking around, nobody to judge anybody. But sometimes do you still doubt that you're going to heaven? Raise your hand. It's okay. Okay. Amen. Well, that, listen, God, God doesn't want you to doubt anymore. He loves you. He loves you. How do you get, how do you overcome that doubt? You start reading the word and you start practicing what it says. And the more that you practice what it says, the, the, that song, Blessed Assurance, I, I don't talk about once saved, always saved, because that's not in the scripture. But Jesus said, those who are in my hand, no one can snatch them out. No one. And he said, the Father's hand is even greater than mine. So I look at my own personal life and I say, how, how does that scripture apply? Because you can jump out of his hand and run around and do stupid stuff you're not supposed to do. So don't jump out of his hand anymore. <laughs> Amen. Stay right there. And how do you do that? Even when you're, even when you doubt, say, God, I believe. Even when, even when you say, Lord, be be like the guy who brought his demon possessed son. Say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. See, all those things are written for us. And sooner or later, you get that assurance. You'll, you know, Jesus said eternal life was knowing God and knowing Jesus when He sent. That's John chapter 17, verse 3. The more we, the more we apply the scriptures, the more we, man, the more we get to know God. I'm telling you. So today, we're going to say the sinner's prayer. And, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I believe and I'm, I'm totally secure in my salvation. But, you know, every time someone says the sinner's prayer, I say it again because I ain't taking no chances. <laughs> so today, we're going to say the sinner's prayer. Because I see some people here that, you know, that might need to say it. And for all of us, let's all, let's all say it together. So if you're ready and you're willing and, and your heart's ready, just repeat after me. Say, Father, please forgive me. I'm so stubborn. I'm so, sometimes rebellious. And sometimes I'm a, I'm a lawbreaker. And I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for taking my place. Because it should have been me there. Thank you for coming out of the grave on the third day to give me eternal life. Today I want that assurance. So come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your love. And fill me with all that you are. And from this day forward, help me to change into the new person that you want me to be. Help me to live as a living sacrifice. And from this day forward, be my Savior and my Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. There's a party two weeks from, in two weeks on Saturday the 19th, there's going to be a 25th, 26th anniversary party starting at 11 a.m. here. All the set frees will be here, so it'll be a big set free party. So you're invited to come and celebrate with us. It'll start at 11 a.m. And all you Facebook people and YouTube people, right? yep, Saturday the 19th I'm at 11 a.m., it's a set free party. And God bless you. Thanks for worshiping with us today. If you need prayer, I'll hang around with you. I'll hang around and pray for you and with you. And, and God bless you. Thanks for worshiping with us today. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's very good.